Here we are again in Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. We are live in Langenberg with Access TV. I'm running the whole series right now of the Sammy's Cottage Kitchen, but you're gonna be able to catch these Christmas shows because I'm doing Christmas shows just in the season here in December. Also on a regular show that they have got going on. Don't know the times, don't know anything. They don't tell me nothing. I'm just kidding. I'm having a lot of fun. I did the first half of the Christmas show. I hope you caught that. And when I did that, I did some little uh, pofiliers, some little um, cream puffs. And I'm going to finish with that because on the first part of the show, I did uh, some nice centerpieces that I've put in the fridge for now. I'll bring them out after. Because first I want to put together a batch of cookies, get that in the oven, because what's Christmas without ginger snaps or gingerbread men or ginger snowflakes something that is you know Christmas it they, this is a recipe that I want to make it's called ginger sparkle cookies look at this recipe I mean I know it by heart but I had to show it to you because it's been around the block I have no idea where it started my grandma or something maybe my mom's grandma it's called ginger sparkle cookies they taste like Christmas you also hear the music playing, that's our CD. And uh, yeah, it's fun. We're gonna have a Christmas show coming up on December 9th. So it's fun to have my own Christmas music playing in the background. Although, I don't know how much I wanna listen to myself, but never mind. So first things first, I have melted up a little chocolate and I wanna make sure it's not getting too hot. So I'm gonna take it off the burners because these are Obama-Marie's, these kind of pans that are in here and uh, they sit on a tub of hot water. It keeps the chocolate from getting too overdone because it'll break. And when it breaks, you can use it for nothing. And I'm going to need that when I'm putting the little cream puff uh, tree together because that's gonna be another food tree. So we're gonna start right now with the ginger, uh, ginger cookies. I have already got um, one half a cup of shortening in here. And I've got about a quarter of a cup of butter. I'm throwing that in. I'm using this nice old mixing bowl, and I'm going to do this by hand. It's just something about the old recipe that makes me want to keep it cottage and old-fashioned. And Christmas. If you keep the old-fashioned idea about family and friends and good food and good entertainment, whatever you feel like, keep the old-fashioned idea alive in this modern world. I just think that can't go wrong. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So I've put that butter in here, and now I have to add one cup of sugar. I've got a half a cup measuring cup here because my jar isn't so large, so one cup doesn't fit in so well. So I'm just gonna throw that in. It's a very easy recipe. I'll have that on my website, but for the time being, you can see that it's one quarter cup of shortening, one half a cup of butter, and a cup of sugar. I've washed my hands and it's a good thing because I'm going to be getting in there with my hands at one point. First I'll just kind of mix in the sugar with the uh, butter. I use butter that has a little salt in it. Now salt does add texture when you're baking. Often I see salt and I think do I want to add salt? Well it depends if you're using a salted butter or an unsalted butter. So I'm not adding salt to this one because I don't have to. I'm just breaking this up a little bit. I've got one egg sitting here, and I have also got some molasses. That's when it gets a little bit icky, but never mind. You don't put a lot of molasses. That's the difference between these cookies and a lot of other cookies. I'm gonna get in with my hands, because just like bread, I like that feeling. I must have played in the mud with mud pies too. <laughs> I don't know. Although I kind of doubt that because I got a little trouble getting dirt on my hands and yet I have no problem with flour and sugar and butter and eggs and anything to do with cooking. <laughs> Hated digging potatoes. 
That's probably why I ended up in the kitchen as a child. Okay, so now I've got this mixture together with um, the butter and the sugar. And I'm gonna add the egg first. I open the molasses. I always crack the egg into a separate dish. I don't trust that the egg is not going to be perfect. Now I'm going to also measure very well here. I need about a quarter of a cup of molasses. And after you've made these enough times, you pretty much know what a quarter of a cup is. Now I like using the dark fancy. Now I'm gonna mix that all together, the egg, the molasses, the sugar, and the fats. That really looks gunky. But see, I have a sink behind me with nice soapy water. So that's how you get the beginning. It's really nice to use the old bowl from Jack's mum, from my husband's mother, from Holland. Interesting, ergonomically, perfectly designed. And you know nowadays, they don't think about that. It's all about, like if you're baking pie or doing anything, and you're holding the, when I say ergonomic, what I mean is that the feel and when you're working with something, it's just, it's got the perfect feeling in it. Okay, now I've got all the wet in there. I need two cups of flour. I've got a cup in my, you think in my flour bin, I do so. And this is what I mean, it's a very simple dough. You have to chill it though. One cup. And two cups. Well, better make sure I have it full. Spices have to go in there yet. This is one of those cookies you don't need vanilla because you've got enough spice. I got a really good ginger. Um, you can go to places like Home Sense, places like that, and you can find really good gingers and really good uh, uh, different spices, and that's what I did. I dug, I got to dig into my spice drawer though. Oh, I see turmeric, oh, I see roasted garlic, I see ginger. And it's a special kind of ginger. It's from India. And when I open it up, I go, Wow. Otherwise, I, for everything else, I like using fresh ginger, but for cookies, that doesn't work. Then you're gonna need a full teaspoon. Generous. So you want that flavor. The reason they're called ginger sparkle cookies is because of the sugar in there, but also, it's really important to have the cinnamon. So it needs an equal amount of cinnamon, a teaspoon of cinnamon. And just a touch of either allspice or cloves or nutmeg, depending on what you like. I'm putting just a touch of cloves. Now, cloves you've got to be careful with, so it's about a pinch. I like my little spice drawer. It has everything in my fingertips. I just didn't see this one because it's not in the top drawer. And, of course, you need some soda. And it's going to be all of the older recipes seem to have soda. And this one's going to need a teaspoon and a half. When you're baking, you should measure fairly accurately. Because just one bit of the wrong thing and it can go the wrong way. I've already preheated my oven to 350. I'm just checking to make sure. And yes, it's ready to go. So I'm going to get this in the, fri in, in the fridge because it has to chill. And then I've already made this dough while you're all sleeping because I need to be able to have something ready to go in the oven. I've only got an hour to put everything together and it wouldn't work if I tried to do it all at once. So right now, this is coming together beautifully. Ah, I feel it. it needs to be soft but well put together. It doesn't want to be pieces of flour in it like that. And I usually just use one hand when I'm working it in. Because, like I said, when you've got a, an ergonomic bowl like this, you kind of twirl it around and it works with you, and you kind of use your thumb like this and you work it in. As long as you've got the kind of bowl that works with you like that. I love it for that. It's almost ready. It doesn't take much. And I'm going to take a different bowl to put it in, I think. Yeah, I've got a bowl over here. <laughs> More Dutch bowls. This is called the Bourbon design. 
It's a very popular Dutch design on, on their pottery. So when my husband and I came back from Europe, when his father passed away, we came back to Canada. And of course, I inherited quite a few little Dutch things, like the little copper on the top over there, and quite a bit of, I don't know, the curtains, the lace curtains I have in my house, basically all. Now, I made this dough just a little stiffer than what the normal one is, because it's a one that you roll into balls. But I have a reason for it, because I want to be able to roll these out and make little gingerbread men. There, it's ready to go. So I'm just gonna get that in the fridge. Take other things out of the fridge. And get this over into the uh, dish pan, because I'm probably gonna need that bowl again. I'm gonna be making more cookies. But I wanna hurry up and get, this and get something in the oven so I can get on to making my other little Christmas tree made with cream puffs. I just want to cover this up with a cloth. That's probably all I need to do. You can cover it with cellophane or a clean cloth. And the sun is it would bring. I'm going to put it in the fridge. And I'm going to take out some things that I've got in my freezer. I had made the little um, profiliers in the cream puffs, and I wanted to make sure they were cold. So I put them in here just to make sure they're chilled down, because you don't want the cream all melting out of them. So you see, we can make quite a tree with these. And look at how funny these are. They look like little birds. <laughs> I did that on purpose, so I get the little effect of the birds. But I'm gonna set this aside. I'm not quite ready for that one yet because I've gotta get, my good fortune is that I had the good sense to make some ginger dough ahead of time so that I can get rolling it out and get them in the pans because I figured it out when I looked at the clock and I can't do all that in one hour. What am I going to do? Baking is fun. I said the last time, missing the grandkids. I did make myself a coffee though and I'm gonna have a sip of it right now. Because you shouldn't want to rush when you're doing this. It's something where you just say, you know what, this is a good day for baking. I've said it so many times to everybody who's following my show, Love it or leave it. Don't do it if it's a chore. Make it a fun project for yourself. Gotta wipe this all off. I love my little island. My husband made this for me a long time ago and then we have modified it three times. When we made the little kitchen here last year, this used to have a little copper stand on the top and all the stuff was hanging on here. And now we've got things hanging everywhere else. And so we took the copper off, but I wouldn't be without it. I'm very fortunate to have this. Now I've got some icing sugar here. And when you're rolling out the dough, it's always good to just do that. Not flour. Icing sugar will keep it crisp. This is a recipe that is not, you know, when you get, sometimes you have gingerbread man or something like that, and it's just, it's hard, and it, and it isn't nice. Well, this is different. This is crisp. So this was in the fridge, so it's, yeah, it's pretty stiff, but it needs to be. So I'll just make sure. There's a work it all in there. Who says this is an exercise? It's a darn good exercise. <laughs> so yeah, last night my husband says, well, did you bake any of them? Because you know, I, I'm a good sampler. <laughs> yeah, I'm not always so good for his waistline. I'd like to tell you this is all healthy food, but it's not, it's festive food. That's all it is, it's good for your soul. I make some really tiny little gingerbread men. I'm gonna do that first. Because a lot of times when people have big meals, you know, that's why I'm making those food trees too with the fruit and the vegetables. You know, once you've had the turkey. Oh, the old fashioned way was you had 
you know, your big turkey stuffing, gravy, potatoes, the whole meal, and then you came out with these big steamed puddings, or pie, and I'm not knocking that because Lord knows I did that a lot. Um, but I, I'm thinking that if you're going to have the meal, you can still opt to all the healthy side of it. You don't have to have all the heavy stuff. You can have the white meat of the turkey, you can have the fruit for dessert, and you can have tiny little cookies if you want. See? You can kind of push it together. It's a rich dough. A little bit more icing sugar. Walking in a winter wonderland. Ooh, looks like I'm snowing on the cookie dough. I guess that makes me sing winter wonderland. Oh, no, here's let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> I think I'm playing with my food again. It's a small place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. So I need to have this about a quarter of an inch thick. See, this half of the island is marble, so that works really good for that. It's about right, I think. And the middle's a little bit thick. I want this to lift it off so it doesn't break. Now, I've got cookie cutters back here. Here's the little, little, little one. So I'm going to do some of those. Right to the edge. I'm doing the right side? Yeah. And these will be ready to go in the oven right smartly. And they cool off fast, too. Well, if I put them outside, they cool off really fast. So even if adults don't want these tiny little gingerbread men, I know the kids do. And when you're decorating these, it's nice too, because you either can just snow on them or you can give them a little bit of eyes with candy. It's simple stuff. And what's good about this cookie dough too is you can re-roll it. And it doesn't hurt it at all. Sometimes you got to put a little bit extra um, powder on the cookie cutter so it doesn't stick. To go a riding in the one horse sleigh. Pick up your feet. Again, I like using the silicone cookie uh, sheet liners. You can wash them. You can use, if you don't have these, you can get these also in a home sensor winners all the time. They're not expensive. But if you can't find them, you just uh, use parchment paper, baking paper. You just peel away the uh, excess dough when you're going to get the little guys out of there because these ones are more fragile. To go riding in the one horse sleigh, giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet. Mix and mingle in a jingle and beat. You can see why kids would love doing this kind of thing. Oh, I just broke one guy in half. Oh, well. I can reroll them. Rocking around Christmas tree. These only take about maximum 10 minutes to cook. And the oven is at 350. That's the right temperature. But I'm just going to do a few of the little ones. I've got to get around on angles. Because I want to be able to make some snowflakes too and some other designs. It's a real simple way of making cookies, but they taste so good. They're gentle, tender. And they taste good. See, I do have to cut one more because now I'm not going to have an even number with cooking. And I'm supposed to have an even number. But I think with baking, that's different because you're putting always 12 on a cookie sheet minimum. Deck the house with bounce and high rocking around. Okay, it's a little bit thick in the middle yet, so I'm just going to do that. 
take the pieces to the side. Okay, what else do I want? Maybe just some little stars. Do I want stars? I want stars. Nice to have an option. Oh yeah, I like the stars. Not too big again. And when you have a variety of shapes like that, you can just kind of decorate them a little different if you want to. Again, that's where the kids often have fun. Oh, I got six stars. And I'm gonna do a snowflake. Oh, is that too big? They're a lot bigger. I think I'll just stick to the stars for this. And the next um, cookie sheet that I make will be the little bit bigger cookies. Wasn't his child. I think this is one of the nicest non-traditional Christmas songs I, I know. I just might as well cut these out too right away. Snowflakes. It's a snowflake. I'll put them on the next cookie sheet, but at least I have them cut out. Okay. Stars. It's one of the songs we'll be doing for the concert. And we do do that one just with an acoustic guitar when we're doing it on the show. Sounds really nice. It wasn't easy for him. Trisha Yearwood sang this song on her album. Must be a few years ago already. I was watching the Country Music Awards. It was really nice to see Garth Brooks coming back and winning Entertainer of the Year again. Go figure. Okay, nice little pan of cookies going in the oven. I'm gonna set the timer on for 10 minutes. Because I'm gonna be busy with other things. And very quickly, 10 minutes can fly. I'm right away gonna get the rest of the cookies ready to go too. See, there's just, because it's not flour on the board, it's just sugar, it uh, is okay. Oh, I just about crunched up my snowflakes. That's what happens when you talk and do. <laughs> oh, am I in trouble? I talk and do all the time. He did his. I'm not talking, I'm singing. <laughs> I met a young lad on the street here in Langenberg last week and he says hey hey I saw you on TV and I said oh my gosh what was I doing he's just talking and singing and cooking <laughs> I, I started laughing I thought I must seem silly to some people but hey I'm living life and loving it but he seemed to think it was a lot of fun and I, I meet people at the grocery store sometime too, and they say, I just want to come over and eat after I watch one of those shows. <laughs> I better watch out who I'm inviting and what I'm doing. I'm just going to get these ready to go. He was God's child. more snow. Elvis Christmas. Christmas trees. Christmas trees. I need more snowflakes. I had three. I need six. Six snowflakes, six Christmas trees, and that would be all I need for now. I'll make a spare, it'll fit on there. And the easiest way really is to peel away all the outside dough like this. Oh, 
won't be no sleigh with reindeer, no sack on his back. Santa Claus is coming in a big black Cadillac. Ho, 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 Christmas time, pretty baby. I like that one. I love the Elvis. Still do, I guess. Get these quickly on the pan. They can easily sit and wait for me until I'm ready to bake them while I get ready for other things. I'm going to put, what's fun about this too is if you, like, like I am today, just wanting to bake a certain amount of things, you put the dough back in the fridge. It keep for days. And the snow is falling on the ground. I mean, Christmas without gingerbread cookies would be wrong. <laughs> Just like not having Christmas music. Just wrong. Oh, I had room for one more. Have I got a piece that's big enough here to cut? I'll make it. I'll make it happen. One more Christmas tree. You can see how an hour can go by really fast just playing around with baking cookies. But I wanted you to see, really, how to make these and how to make that particular recipe. Now I'm just gonna wait for the cookies to come out of the oven, get the other ones in the oven and clean up my little mess before I get on to building the little Christmas tree. Black Cadillac, oh, it's time. To put this in a bag. Oh, here, I got cellophane. Waste not, want not. Get that in the fridge. And it can sit with the other dough that I just made when I was showing you how to make the recipe. And then later on, I can cook it up and put it in the freezer. And all my Christmas baking is just about ready to go. And then you don't do the pre decorating on those. Well, it smells mighty heavenly in here. It smells like spicy ginger cookies. Ah! That will be the timer. Whoa, look at that. Crispy. I'm going to let them, and I got to put these in too while I'm waiting to do other things. But I'm going to first put the timer on again 10 minutes. So you know that you cook them at 350 for 10 minutes. And I'm just going to let these sit. I don't want to manipulate them at all right now because that'll break them. Okay? Now, I don't have time to show you how to make this dough, but I made a fudge cookie dough that I will put on my, on my website so you can get the recipe. And I made your basic soft peanut butter dough. And I've got this wonderful form. Look at this, acorns. And again, you can go to places like, this is a specialty thing to be able to do if you can find the pans, but you can find form pans everywhere. And I, I shop at HomeSense because you get the best prices and you get the most unique things. Regina, Winners in Yorkton, wherever I can find it. Uh, so I really scored with this one, I, I love it. Now, I found that I want to just, I use the, um, I always use avocado oil lately. I like it for cooking, but I found this, which is nice. So it's just like oil in the bottle. It, it isn't really a spray, it's just a drizzle. Because I want to get that in there so that I don't, the cookie dough doesn't stick. The form comes out beautifully. And so what I'm doing is the bottom of the acorn is going to be the light brown, which is the peanut butter. And the top will be the dark, fudgy, fudgy chocolate. I will make sure you get those recipes, so keep it in mind. Fudge chocolate and uh, soft peanut butter. They are really crispy when they come out, around the outside and soft in the middle, which makes them really amazing. So I'll take the dough out like this. It takes me a few minutes. I just have to roll little balls, like just small balls like this. And you're just gonna throw it in each piece because you're gonna meld them together. But you want them too big. See, this one's a little big. You don't know until you start doing it. And it goes to the top, like that. Like that. Pretty pencils. 
On our next Christmas show, I think I'll find George Street. I love George Street. George Street Christmas. Because <laughs> I think I know my own by now. <laughs> and, and my good um, camera crew here, Cole and Jeff, thank you so much for coming out and doing this. They're going to just be hearing only this music in their head. <laughs> I'm gonna go, oh, gonna have to wipe that out with some. <laughs> and they're going, no, we won't. It's interesting because the Christmas music, you really only hear it at Christmas time. So you don't really have a chance to get too sick of it. It's wonderful. I'm trying to get this all together quickly because as soon as the other cookies out go out, I want these in the oven and I want to be able to get onto the cream puff um, filet tree. So you see I'm just putting all the dark chocolate cookie dough. Ooh, I'm barely going to make it. Might have to steal from another cookie. I might have to. Now, you know, they're not perfect because I don't measure it perfectly. So you can do that. You can also just make one completely uh, out of the peanut butter cookie if you want to. So you see, just in the top like that, there's a reason. Now I gotta get the chocolate off. You also have to chill this batter, really important. That's why it's pretty hard for me to show you from the beginning to the end how to do it. Otherwise, you're gonna have chocolate everywhere bleeding into the peanut butter and that wouldn't be nice. So I'll show you quickly how to do this. You just put the ball in like that, then you push both of the balls so that they fill the cookie form nicely. Right? Just like that. And if you don't have both the balls in, then you don't know where your dividing is. So that's why it goes that way. I'm gonna continue doing this while I check on the rest of the cookies over there in a minute. And then I will have all the cookies that are happening because I want to be able to make a cookie tray with fancy, fun type cookies. I also have got cookie balls made, which again, I'll put the recipe in there. And they're called hazelnut butter balls. And I put them already around my strawberry food tree. Because what it is is edible edible food centerpieces. And I think that that's a pretty cool way to present, you know, a nice food on a party or for a family. It's a gift without wrapping it up in pretty ribbons of blue. I'm gonna come back to this in a minute. And I just hear my oven beeping, so that means the other little Gingerbread cookies are done and they are. Look at this. Awesome. So now I can hold them here. Oh, better shut that off for a minute. Timer. And meanwhile, I've got my little acorns ready to go in. So they're going in the oven. And I have to turn the oven down a little for these. They need to have a lower oven. So I'm going to push bake. Um, down here, and then I'm going to do uh, 300 on it. 320, I think. So 320 about for the little acorns, because you want them to be soft on the inside. I'm just going to let those sit there. I've got some chocolate that has softened here. I need to soften that one a little more to do my cream puffs. And while I was waiting for cookies and things, I started taking whipping cream and, and filling my little pofiliers. You see some of these look a little bit like birds, which is cool. And I'm just gonna turn this on for a minute because I need that to soften a bit. As you can see, I got a whole pile of these. Set these to the side. I'm gonna take a bunch of the little bird guys out of here because I want those all around the bottom. I'm playing, but these are delicious too. Look at, don't they look like birds? I think they look like little birds. <laughs> My granddaughter Desiree is 
nuts about ducks. I was kind of going for a partridge in a pear tree, but I think they look like ducks. She would say, she would say they look like ducks. So I'm gonna take all of those out, put over here. I made a lot of them because it doesn't matter, they freeze. Even once you have the cream in them, they freeze. All the ones in the bottom here, I already put the cream in because it takes a long time to get them onto the tree. So I wanna make sure that I was ready to go. So put this to the side. And I'll start getting my toothpicks in my tree. I think I'll crown it with a strawberry or something because, or maybe just a chocolate profilier. I'm not sure. I just know that I gotta put a lot of this Oh, that's just my oven. I thought the timer was going and I had to take some, you know, don't want to burn anything. You just get involved in what you're doing and you kind of forget. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I gotta go take care of that. So now I have some chocolate. That's all nicely softened here. That's the dark and medium chocolate that I've kind of blended together. And, I'm, and because it's warm here, it's gonna keep it from getting hard while I'm working with it. But first I wanna just get a bunch of toothpicks in here. So then I'm gonna have a strawberry tree. Oh, well, strawberry and blackberry, right, with mint. And then I'm going to have a, a vegetable tree and that's just with broccoli, cauliflower, and what else have I got in there? Little tomatoes, very Christmassy, of course. Okay, let's see how this works. Now I'd like to have the whipping creams inside, just dip the very top in them. See how that works? And just put one right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's gonna be too good not to lick my fingers. I am looking my fingers, it's terrible. Oh well. So you just keep piling them together like that. It's hard to know exactly where you have to put the toothpicks because they're not all the same size. That's the work, I guess. So you don't have to put chocolate on all of them. I'm just doing it with some. Kind of from the top. Because of course we're gonna put snow on these too. I definitely need a wet cloth on my fingertips. Because like I said, it isn't cool to be licking your fingers really. Of course, once you finish this, you have to put it in the fridge too, or freezer for that matter, actually. You can actually put them in the freezer so that they really solid up. Because the cream inside can, um, a trick to the cream too is if you've got a little bit of powdered milk, you put that in with the whipping cream and it'll hold it, it'll make it stiffer. Um, I can see myself having to replace all these little toothpicks as I go, so I'm going to have to do them one at a time. Look at that already. Now, while it's wet, I've got some of these fancy sprinkles, so I might want to have some different colors going on in there. I wonder what to put in the very top. I should put one on the very top here. Do I want a bird? Maybe I want a bird. I think I do. Ah, that doesn't quite do it, no. I think I was right, I'm gonna go with a strawberry. But right now I've got some little sprinkles here. So when the chocolate is wet like that, 
is the time to put some of that on there. I'm just about ready to take my teeth after this one. That wouldn't be good either. There, there we go. So I'm going to use a little bit of red. See? Oh, it's pernickety, but it's fun. A little bit of red there. Because that, that uh, chocolate solidifies pretty fast. I just got to check on my cookies here in a minute too because I think I should put a timer on them. I'm, I'm a little bit preoccupied with what I'm doing here so it's pretty easy to forget what I'm doing. Oh yeah, they're puffing up beautifully and ready, looking really nice. If you want to have a look at that. They're doing their thing. But I'm going to put a 10 minute timer on here. Because you don't want to overcook these. They'll lose the softness if you do that. Okay. Continuing to build these in here. I've also got white chocolate going on. So I'm going to want to take some white chocolate over. I think if it's ready. Oh no, it needs a little bit more. I'm going to have to heat it. I'll continue with the dark chocolate then first. Has to heat a little more. These are doing well. But I think what I have to do is take some of these out of the pan to set just on here. It's a nice clean surface. Otherwise, they won't chill properly for me to decorate. They look so cute. They look cute. I think I'll put that in the back burner. It's more controllable. Little stars. You feel it, you can hear them snapping kind of as I put them down there because it's just going to be so tender. They just fall apart in your mouth. Trust me, I know what I'm saying. Stars below, the little guys on top. <laughs> It'd help if I turn the right burner on. I set these to the side. I gotta wait for the white chocolate to do their thing, so I'm just gonna do a little bit more of the dark chocolate ones. You need a lot of these in order to do this. And again, what a pretty tree it's gonna be. And I won't put sprinkles on everything. Well, look at my tree. It's coming together, a cream puff tree. Oh, it's a bit of work, but it's fun. So I gotta finish up a few little odds and ends in here. I see there's still room for a couple more. Now, luckily you can tip it like this because if you remember in the beginning, I showed how I made these trees. And um, it was by putting a little bit of chocolate on the bottom of the stems so that they would Hold. I see little holes here in places I can still put something in. If the overlap, it's okay. See? Especially in the bottom, because you want it to be a little fatter. And it's really important after you're done working with all these to actually chill them. It's better. Because you've been handling them. So it's kind of good for them to get chilled, because there's cream in the cream puffs, right? I've been sticking a little mint in there. Let it snow. So here we go. I think it's pretty close to being finished. So I'm going to let it snow. One more time. Put a little bit of snow on. Such a simple way to decorate it and finish it. I crowned it with a strawberry. And I see little spots where I could be putting a little more mint in there. But before you serve it, you can always just add a little bit more. So I usually I've got the warm chocolate here yet. My glue, <laughs> it's pretty funny really. So it fills in like little holes too, but it also makes it pretty. Now my fingers have been all around the side here, so I have to put a little more snow around there. And I'm gonna be putting other things in the bottom because I saved back all of the little 
bird looking. Aren't they cute? So all the little ones that look like little birds. I like to call them either, you know, turtle doves or something, even though my granddaughter would call them ducks. Now you're gonna put them all around the bottom ledge here, all right? It's just a finishing touch. It's a swell time. They're such tender, gentle. They aren't that fragile, but they feel fragile because they're just like so fluffy and light. And they're only half filled with the cream, so really not a seriously bad. That one's kind of odd. I think I'll take him out of there. I don't think that's a duck or a turtle dove or anything. I think it's just a blob. <laughs> I'm going to move him to the side over by my poncetta tree. And i got to start clearing a path here because I have to take the cookies out of the oven that I baked. I, don't know, I think it needs a little mint on the top yet. It just needs to have something up there with that strawberry to make it look like a top. Let me see what I can find. It just looks like a pretty nice top. That's the Jingle Bell Rock. Yeah. See the difference? Now I could put mint in the bottom, but I'm thinking of putting something else in there. I don't know what yet. So I'll, I'll just wait because I have to get the other cookies out of the oven and put them here. Maybe I'll just put a couple little gingerbread men down there. That'd be cool. It would brighten up the bottom. Yeah. Sorry, I'm pernickety, but I'm looking at the places that the snow is missing. Can't have snow missing. But I don't want to win because it'll drift it all over the place. Just gonna move some of these things off of here to the side. Wipe this down. Got snow everywhere. And I'm going to grab those cookies out of the oven. The acorns. Now the acorns might look nice in the bottom of that too. A little too big though. There they are. See, I didn't have quite enough dough to fill them all, so I have one empty one. I need one more pot holder out of here. Now I'm going to take these also and just powder them. But I'm going to see how these come out. I first of all need some um, baking paper. I'm trying to think of where I might have put that. Where I might, oh, here it is. Because I'm gonna need to dump them onto the baking paper. All right, I hope they come out nice. Whoa, beautiful, look at that. Just so tender and gentle. I got a few more in here, but you kind of tap them out as they tap out, because I don't want to break them. They're really tasty. They don't need any decorating, but if you want to do some decorating on them, again, you can just dust them a little bit. Beautiful. Look at. Here's one, one that just wasn't quite right. <laughs> I didn't have enough of the batter. Like I said, I will make sure that recipe for you is in there, into your, in, in the website at um, sammyrosehollenberg.com, and all of those will be in there. Now, I'm just gonna do a real simple thing here with, with this. The stars, I think I'd like to put a couple decorations in the middle of the stars. I've got these little white icing snowflakes. <clears throat> so I could just lay out these little stars for a minute while that's sitting there. And put just to, again, I call it my glue. It's the white chocolate. Oh, that's kind of messy, but I'm gonna do my best. Needs to be cleaner than that. That's what happens when you work from a distance. 
but I'm going to dust it again too. But it's really pretty to have. I need a smaller a handle like this. Just in the middle of the star. You can decorate, you can pipe on all kinds of icing and do this. I just don't have time for it today. Another day, maybe I'll be able to show you some fancier decorating ideas with piping bags. On my next Christmas show, I'm probably going to show you how to make chocolate baskets, cages, so to speak, that you can set your other dessert inside of. It's pretty cool. But I don't have time for that today. You see, I got the stars with the snowflakes in the middle of it. And then, again, just a slight dusting makes it pretty. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these. I've decided that's what I want to put on the bottom. Just a little bit. You don't have lots. It's amazing how you can make things look very Christmassy. See, I'm just going to put them in here. It makes a difference in the whole design. I think I'll separate them a little bit more, like that. Then I can put a couple little uh, gingerbread men in there as well, just for, for the look. And I'll just give them a little snow. Oh, I, oh, I decorated a couple of those. That's funny. I put, <laughs> I put eyeballs on them. Playing around when you weren't looking. And again, a little bit of snow on them. Just looks prettier. Because they kind of look like ghost. They kind of look like ghost gingerbread man. I'm not sure what I did there. But you see how that'll decorate up the whole plate. Kids will get a biggest kick out of that part of it too. You see the little ducks around the bottom? The stars and the gingerbread men. It's beautiful. How about that? Now, I'm going to get a platter ready to put out all my little um, acorns. So, you just make a complete pile of acorns. It's really cool. You don't have to decorate these. You don't have to do anything more with it than what you see already. They're beautiful, just the way they are, and tasty. Trust me, I will sink my teeth into one of these. Now, you can, you can put snow on top of these if you want to, too. I just don't want to. I think I've put snow on enough things. It's going to start blizzarding the way I'm putting snow on things. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming in a big black Cadillac. Look at that. I'll just put these to the side. Now, I have got... Just a plate here as well, with a little small tidbits, you know? You don't want, look, look I'm gonna snow again. If you don't want a big dessert, this is the way to go. For anybody who's keeping it light, but still want that little crispy thing. I'm just gonna layer these, right? All my little snowmen, ginger men. I always make more than I need simply because if anything breaks, it doesn't matter. Then I'll put a star on top. A little more dust. A little more snow. Not too much. I'm actually going to turn the star around because I don't want snow on the star. Oh, there we go. So you can actually see them. So there we go, we got this one, which is a beautiful cream puff tree, pofilier to be, you know, technically correct. I'm just gonna clean this up for a minute and I'm gonna dig out the other centerpieces that we made and you'll see how beautiful this looks. What a great way to have edible centerpieces. I gotta go into the fridge because I didn't want that all sitting outside. The one thing that I did make that wasn't desserty was the little vegetable tree. So nobody can say there isn't something healthy. And I had a dip that went with that in a nice little red bowl because you want to keep things beautifully colorful. 
So even vegetables seem very appetizing, even when you see all the desserts. Now I had to put my little tree in here. Oh, my crowning glory. But I have to also put the top on the tree again because I had to take it off. It didn't fit in the fridge. It's no problem. I just took it off and set it on the side and I just need a little bit of chocolate to glue it back on. You see I've got the cookies on the bottom here and the fruit on the bottom too. Just have to find where I hid my strawberry. Oh my gosh. Oh, there it is. My top. And then I've put the snow on there, but because it's been sitting in the fridge for a while, you can refresh that. It's not a problem. And I think I will, since I'm having really fun, you know, with blizzards. How about this? How does it look to you? Quite edible? Well, I want to thank everybody for coming out and watching me do all the baking that goes with Christmas. So we've got the acorn, peanut butter, and brownie chocolates. We've got the uh, cookies, these wonderful little cookies that are called uh, hazelnut butter balls. Ooh, they're good, they're delicious. We've got a whole tree with mint and chocolate dipped strawberries and some blackberries. We've got the ginger crisp cookies and the cream puffs with a little bit of gingerbread man. Whew, I feel like I'm full of snow. I want to thank everybody for coming out, having fun with me, doing all the Christmas things here with Access. Please watch on my regular show on, I believe it's on Monday nights at 7, on the Sammy's Cottage Kitchen series. And also during the season, you're going to see uh, in during December the Christmas shows and now I'm going to be doing more Christmas shows this is just the first and then I'm going to do something on my next shows uh, like I said to make chocolate cages and show you how to make that and to put it around a nice dessert and also I'm going to show you how to make a turkey non-traditionally by separating it uh, a ham and what all goes with it for your Christmas meal and it's really fun for me because I, I love it. My family's going to be coming for Christmas and I'm just practicing and I'm going to get it all ready for Christmas. I always say to everybody, we live in a great country. Uh, I'd like everybody to remember that life is good and you only got one of them to live, so live it. And keep on keeping on no matter what gets in your face. Sing a little, bake a little, grab my recipes and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out. Till next time. Merry Christmas. Helen in the neighborhood. I'm going to taste these because they look bad. Mm -mm -mm.